Hi, this is Shadi and welcome back to Judoka Profile. It has been a long time and in this episode we're going to be taking on one of the most charismatic and talented judokas of our generation, the real American Eagle, the judo silencer, Travis Stevens. And in this episode, like always, we go through the private aspect of their lives, how they found judo, their accomplishments and their highlights, and dive a little deep into their techniques and see what makes this incredible, complete grappler so unique. So let's begin. If you are new to this series, each episode is divided into four parts. First is origins and upbringing, where is this person from and how did they start judo. Two is career highlights, some of the most memorable moments of their career. Three, it is kumikata, trying to analyze the grip fighting and tactics. And four, it is the top three finishers that they often use to finish off opponents, whether it is tachiwaza or neiwaza. So first we start with origins and upbringing. So Travis Stevens was born on February 28th, 1986 in the city of Bellevue in the state of Washington, United States of America. He started judo at the age of six years old. Very early he started to make a very good uh, impression competitively and later on he took up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Now he is a Rokudan in judo or six degree black belt and also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu training at the Henzo Gracie Academy in the blue basement with legends like John Danaher and many others. So he is 5 foot 11 inches tall and he competed in his career at the minus 81 category or the middleweight category. Now let's switch over to career highlights and the first highlight that I want to discuss is the epic battle between him and Germany's Ole Bischoff. Now, many of you don't know this, but four years prior to that in the Beijing Olympics, they had met in the third round. Bischoff came out victorious and went on to win the gold medal in the Olympic Games. But Travis still wanting to make his dream come true. Four years later in 2012, they met yet again. This time it was the semi-finals, a far more crucial battle and it was absolutely bloody that Travis ended up injured and his head was bleeding. Uh, Ole accidentally poked one of his eyes but yet Travis kept on going strong. All his face was wrapped up but still he wanted to fight. He wanted that gold medal. He wanted to write history for his country and still he would fight even with a battered and bruised face as you see here one of the most graphic and gruesome battles in olympic history but uh, obviously we all know that very famous face-off that happened till this day people are still talking about it but unfortunately when those blue flags were raised Travis's world was shattered it did not end but it was shattered on that day but he kept on going, he continued training and four years later he bulldozed through absolutely everyone in the Rio de Janeiro uh, Olympic Games showing incredible and dominant uh, judo, taking out one of the greatest like former world champion Avdantil uh, Chirkishvili of Georgia, uh, 2014 world champion, choking him out, submitting him showing that not only he is a stand-up Tachiwaza man but also a Niwaza man. This very famous photo came out of this Olympic Games. Travis uh, wanted to go to the finals this time. He wanted to write history for his country and also he wanted to make his dream uh, come true. Showing incredible and dominant judo. Here you see the very famous over and under pass. Uh, very basic yet works every time once you know how to do it winning by Osai Komi and finding his way to the finals against Kassan Kalmur Zayev but in these high level competitions 
uh, one tenth of a second can be a lifetime and sometimes you just do not get lucky Travis ended up with a uh, silver medal but he fought all the way to the end and this is the spirit of a real judoka not only against Ole Bischoff with this incredibly bloody battle but uh, going through and pursuing and not giving up on the dreams and going back home with arguably the greatest medal which is an Olympic medal and the third and final highlight that I want to discuss is getting out of your comfort zone and becoming a well-rounded and complete grappler now we all know that Travis Stevens is also a BJJ black belt took off his gi and also learned grappling without the gi and also dedicating a long time on the ground so he is now has become not only uh, from a competitive standpoint one of the most accomplished judokas or grapplers but also technically and academically he has become a treasure one of the most sought after instructors uh, in the US and also worldwide online via means like judo and BJJ fanatics so what Travis is leaving behind not only competitively but also academically and just technical theories is absolutely incredible getting out of his comfort zone and earning a black belt in BJJ and continuing to teach judo up on it till this day on his platform and earning his Rokudan or six degree black belt and becoming a red and white uh, belt so obviously he is not willing to stop any day uh, soon and also he still has that uh, student mentality in his head even though he is one of the greatest instructors of our generation now let's go to the technical side of the episode and talk kumikata now when it comes to the Jimmy Pedro school of judo we all know that their gripping system is incredibly offensive constantly putting your opponent under pressure and it comes down to two simple types of gripping the first one the classical of sleeve and lapel travis stevens is right-handed the second is a hand on the lapel which is actually the non-dominant hand while the other grips the head or grips deep down the back closing the distance here is one great example of the koshi guruma uh, Travis is right-handed but he grabbed the left lapel in order to strike with the other hand here we have a different scenario where he gripped also the right the left lapel in order to strike with Ippon Seoenage so his gripping system whether you watch his tutorials or here you watch him compete you would know that he has uh, either a false left-hander or he would grip like a lapel with a dominant right hand down at the back so if any one of you like i said knows the jimmy pedro system of uh, grip fighting it is incredibly offensive and constantly looking to put your opponent under pressure i've talked about this in my kayla harrison judoka profile episode finally the top three finishers and the first one is the most monumental which is the Ippon Seonage very reminiscent of the mythical Toshihiko Koga with the standing variation in particular he does it uh, sleeve side or lapel side now uh, the standing variation is arguably the most hardest to pull off because it needs speed strength accuracy technique and Travis has it all it's very easy compared to this to go down on your knees and surprise your opponent but to take them uh, with the standing variation is incredibly hard and now Travis has his own course of mastering Seoenage based on his experience as a competitor the second one has very similar basics which is the Koshi uh, Guruma being caught from a false left-handed stance and this is where he catches the head with his dominant uh, side or dominant hand in order to take uh, the opponent straight into the ground for a pawn and as very dominant speed 
accuracy, technique, and strength. And like I said, Travis has it all. And finally, of course, we cannot talk about Travis Stevens without talking about his Neiwaza and the mastering of Neiwaza, whether it is Osai Komiwaza passing guard uh, and then going for the pin, or it is Kansetsu Waza, the joint locks, or the Shimewaza choking techniques that we saw pull off at the 2016 Olympic Games. Travis has it all covered when it comes uh, to the ground. A BJJ black belt will obviously do that, but his transition from standing judo to Neiwaza is absolutely uh, incredible to watch. So a well-rounded, complete grappler, Travis Stevens, that he is. So um, it has been a while since I haven't done a judoka profile. Last time I did it, I had maybe 2,000 subscribers. So uh, I want to see how you guys react. I know hundreds of you voted for the series to be back so here it is i figured i'd come back with a banger like travis stevens so uh if you haven't watched my old episode uh i have a playlist called judoka profile you can go watch if uh, any of your favorite judokas are in there you can easily watch it and if it's not uh, drop it down below if you want um for it to be made as an episode so if you have anything else to add let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons only like i said if you have anything else to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening <laughs>